Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about equilibrium analysis in concurrent force systems. So in equilibrium analysis, we are examining a body that is in equilibrium using the forces and geometry we know to solve for unknown forces or other unknown values. Uh, so for example, down here, I've got some forces uh, on a body drawn in. So this is a barrel that's sitting in kind of an off-center groove. Uh, maybe I know the gravity force. So that's given us 600 pounds. Uh, but maybe I want to know the magnitude of these two normal vectors. So F2 and F3 uh, are normal forces. And I want to know maybe what are those values going to be. So to determine these unknown forces, we're going to use the process of equilibrium analysis, which consists of the following steps. So number one, we're going to draw a free body diagram of the body in the problem, showing all known and unknown forces. Step two. We are going to use the free body diagram to write out the equilibrium equations. And step three, we're going to solve the equilibrium equations uh, for the unknowns. So in creating a free body diagram, you want to draw a picture of the body being analyzed separate from all the background objects. So draw in any forces acting on the body, uh, any normal forces, any gravitational forces, any friction forces, any tension forces, uh, or any other types of forces. So make sure you are paying attention uh, to find all of those forces that might be at play. Uh, and you want to add any angles uh, for the force vectors and any key dimensions that you're going to see uh, in the problem that are going to help you solve the problem. Uh, so for concurrent force systems, the angles are going to be particularly important. So here's an example of creating a free body diagram. So say we're examining a ladder. So this ladder here, I'm going to separate it from the background, so I only draw the ladder. Uh, after that, I want to draw in all the forces. So anywhere we've got a point of contact, I would have normal forces. So up at the wall here and down at the floor here, and those are always going to be perpendicular to the surfaces uh, where that contact occurs. Uh, I'm going to have a gravity force, so the ladder has some mass itself, and so it has a gravity force in the middle. Uh, I've got friction down here at the bottom, so I'm assuming this wall is smooth, this one is rough. If I have a rough surface, uh, I'm going to have a friction force that goes parallel to the surface that opposes uh, the way the ladder would slide. So the bottom of the ladder would tend to slide out if this were slippery. So the friction force can be pointing opposite of that. Uh, and finally, I've got the man here. So this is also a normal force. The man would be pushing down on the ladder here. So I get all those forces in there. Uh, I also want to get in any key angles. So in this case, the uh, angle of the ladder itself and any key dimensions. Uh, the man is one meter down from the top. It's another one meter from the man to the center of the ladder where the gravity force acts and it's two meters to the bottom here. So more information on creating free body diagrams can be found in section 1.4 of the textbook. So next up is the equilibrium equations. So for a body in equilibrium we know that the sum of the forces must be equal to zero. So simply adding up F1, F2, F3, all of those force vectors, however many you have, they all need to sum up to be equal to zero because F equals MA and the acceleration is zero, so the sum of the forces needs to be zero. To solve the vector equation, we need to break this vector equation into component equations. Uh, and so this depends on how many, if it is a 2D problem or a 3D problem. So for a 2D problem, we're gonna have X components so I find the x component of force 1, the x component of force 2, the x component of force 3, and I'm going to add all of those numbers up, and they need to be equal to 0. And I'm going to take the y component of force 1, the y component of force 2, the y component of force 3. All of those components, those y components, need to add up to be equal to 0 as well. So it does involve breaking down all of your vectors into x and y components. For more information on doing that, you're going to go to Appendix Section 1.1. So this gives us scalar equations we can, we can use to solve uh, with simple algebra. So um, maybe F1 is unknown, uh, and if I want to solve for F1, I've got the components in these two vectors here. So this also happens to turn our one vector equation into two, two equations. Uh, so our force equation, which is one equation, uh, but our component equations, we have uh, two scalar equations out of the one vector equation. 
Uh, and if we did this in 3D, I would have the same thing, except I'd also have a Z component equation. Um, so we get two equations in 2D or three equations in 3D. So our two equations in 2D means we can solve for up to two unknowns. So if I have the unknown magnitude of two separate forces, or say the unknown magnitude and unknown direction uh, of one force. In either case, I've got two unknown values and I've got two equations. That's the maximum I can do. In a simple concurrent force system for three dimensions, we would have three equations. So sum of forces in the x, sum of forces in the y, and sum of forces in the z, which means we can solve for up to three unknown values. This could be the magnitude of three separate force vectors, or it could be the unknown magnitude of one force vector and two angles that we would have uh, to define the direction of that force vector. So it could be magnitudes, it could be angles. Um, later on when we go to rigid body systems it can be uh, dimensions, so distances as well. So for now we're only working with concurrent force systems, that means everything comes together at a single point, uh, and we're only working with force equilibrium equations. When we work with non-concurrent force systems, we will initially need to ensure that the sum of the moments uh, will be equal to zero as well. Uh, for the same reason at equilibrium, uh, it's going to uh, need to be zero because there's no angular acceleration. So this will make problems more complex, but it's also going to give us more equations to solve for more unknowns once we get to these non-concurrent force systems. So as a review, to determine these unknown forces, uh, we're going to do step one, draw a free body diagram. Uh, make sure we show all known and unknown forces, all key dimensions and angles. Step two, we're going to use our free body diagram to write out the equilibrium equations. Uh, specifically, we need those component equations to be able to solve. And step three is we're going to use those component equilibrium equations to solve for unknown values, unknown force magnitudes or unknown force directions. So that's all I have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.